Welcome back. We are going to uh, actually go in more detail uh, in this class on how to capture the desired behavior as a finite state machine. So specifically, we're going to look at all the steps you want to do. You want to list the states, you want to give some meaningful names, show what the initial state is, and then add some transitions between the states that might be based on inputs. In other words, things that you might press. For each state, define all possible transitions that would cause you to leave that state. And then finally, refine the uh, finite state machine, um, execute the finite state machine uh, mentally and make any needed improvements. I'm going to go off script. I'm going to start, let's see, I'm going to see if, uh, actually I'm going to do this. <laughs> This is bizarre. I can't go up. I found a funky example with this. All right, here we're going to go. We're going to start at this one. So let's say, let's just do this example. Actually, I was going to do this example. So let's see. Uh, so let's see what it is. All right. Let's say we have a door, and we want to unlock the door. Only when buttons are pressed in the correct sequence. So we have to press start, then red, blue, green, red. So this is going to be like one of them, uh, one of those cipher locks that allows you to unlock something, right? And we're going to do it with red so it's more, in, or with color so it's more inherently obvious. All right. So we're also going to add an output A that indicates that some colored button is pressed and that you actually want it to, to start. So let's look at the states. And this is the important thing to note is that when we do a state, we're going to sit there in the wait state until you press the button that says S, start. All right. Now, what will cause that transition from, from weight to something else? What else other than S? Remember, this is a finite state machine, sequential logic, blah, blah, blah. The clock, all right? So S is pressed, and the rising edge of the clock occurs. We'll have us go from the wait state to the start. In other words, we're going to wait for the colored buttons. So the correct way to go through, and by the way, uh, our output is going to be zero until you've gone through all the correct buttons. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that both A and R are, pre are, are present. So that means that the R button has been pressed and remember, A is rep representing that some button has been pressed. All right? It allows us to uh, verify that we can go between one state and the next. So we know that if we press the R button, we're in the red button was pressed state. That's good. All right? And then if we press the blue button next, we go to the blue button has been pressed. We're still good. And we then press green, then we're going to the green state. We're still possibly could be correct, right? And then we press R, that means that uh, we're in the red one state, we unlock the door, and then at the next clock, then we'll, uh, we'll go back to wait. So again, here, R was pressed, then blue, red, then blue, then green, then red. As we said here, start, then red, blue, green, red. You all got that, right? All y'all? Yes? 
Now, one thing that I haven't represented, this is the correct way everything flows. What have I not represented here? Failure. So, you also have to create the full transition, including any failure that might happen. So, in this case, here we have a situation of S versus not S, or for that matter, anything else. But if you have A and not R, which would mean that A was pressed, not R, and blue and green was also pressed, you would go off. If you actually looked at what fully this is right here, the full definition of this is that A and not R or B or C would cause you to go up here. You agree with that? Oh, I'm sorry. G. But the other problem associated with this equation then is it really is, it could be not B, right? Well, first of all, A is going to be equal to R or B or G. Do you agree with that? Yes? What, what actually is so it is just, What is what? What actually is A? A is you press the R or B or G button. That's all it is. And why do you need it? Okay, what, what do you think? Think about it for a second. Memory? Yeah. Not quite. Well, you need to know when a button has been pressed. Because when you press a button, that means you can go to a, uh, a transition. All right? So the A is just a, an A button, right? And it turns out if we were to, to go through all of this specifically, this would simplify to A not R because you've already pressed A, which means you have B or G, and you just need to make sure that A didn't result from pressing R. Because when you press R, that's your transition here. We're using A as a way to distinguish that you pressed one of the buttons, which means you're ready to transition to the next state. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, let me answer you. Maybe you, you have a, something that will make it clearer. Uh, probably not. <laughs> um, how, how can we differentiate if you hit two buttons at the same time? Oh, that's one of the aspects of this. What if you hit two buttons at the same time? I assume it would have... I assume it would output one and if you hit red and blue at the same time, it would the signal AR. Okay. If you had hit red and blue at the same time, you think you would move down here, but you pressed... Okay, I see what you mean. Um, yes, actually, that is a flaw with this, and actually, I'm supposed to address this later. All right? So the, uh, to answer, go back to yours. You have to go on. We're saying that this will operate, that whenever you press R or B or G, that will result in A. So what, what does this turn out to be? A is an output, and it's a combinational circuit, right? And your input is R, B, G will give you A. And then for this transition, it looks like you need to have A and R 
Oh, so instead of sending in three inputs where one is one of them is one and the other is zero, you're just you just have one input into the code to them. Well, yeah, we, it, it, first of all, it makes the transition easy, but I'm going to talk about this later, that there's a flaw that has already been identified. All right, let's just go with this design right now, all right? So A, not R, goes over there. Um, and oh, by the way, if you, uh, if you don't press A, it stays here. Well, that means that if you're not pressing anything, right? So if you're not pressing anything and a clock comes up, then it just stays in the same state. You agree with that? Yeah. So that's what not A means, is that you're not pressing anything. So the next, uh, well, the, the, why did this all of a sudden go all, all over here? All right, so this goes with everything, all right? So here we go. Um, if you, uh, in this case, if you're not pressing anything, you stay in the first red state. And if you press, if a button is pressed and B is not pressed, then it goes to the wait. In other words, then it won't allow it to unlock. So only after you correctly press R, then B, then G, then R. Now, as has been noted here, what happens according to this if all three buttons at the exact same time. You still will open it. Because this says you didn't press R. You didn't press B. But if you press them all at the same time, then you actually will go all the way through. All right, so hence is these change conditions other buttons are not pressed also. So we need to make a modification, and here we go. Because of our, our observation that we came up with, we are able to say, oh yeah, we have to make sure that um, you're going over here and not R and not B, not G, not e that. I want you to I want you to put your head against this right there. I need you to convince yourself that that will come up with the situation where you're only pressing R. In fact, this might be very good to do a truth table on. How many inputs will this truth table have? 4. How many lines in this truth table? 16. So what I want you to do is in your little groups of two or three or four, whatever, write the truth table for this right here. All right? We are back. Now, one thing I, I said off camera is uh, I asked to set up some stuff. So let me examine or have you examine or uh, out there in the uh, uh, video world what I actually asked uh, people to do is to look at this and set up the table for this. It turns out that there are only really three inputs, that being R, G, and B. And A is actually not an input, it's the result of the three inputs. So there's not uh, 16 total lines, but there are eight total lines in this uh, truth table. So uh, with that additional information, it's also helpful to figure out all of these different things in the truth table. If you want to pause and work on that with this additional information and then uh, uh, I'm going to solve this uh, right in a few seconds. He is, um, is affected by uh, either R or G or B. And just for grins I had you do A not. Also what I had you look at is uh, um, we had this formula right here, which identified what would go back from start What would go back from start to wait? So here are the three things that I want you to look at. Here is A, R, B, 
naught, G naught, here is A naught, and here is A, and then in parenthesis R, B naught, G naught, all knotted. So if we look at those things, this is our, our result. What I want to point out is this is one of the transitions from the state start to red. This is another transition from the state start. And this is another transition from the state start. So you're in the state start. Where does this go? It goes to the state start. Would you agree with that? If you're not pressing any button, you just go back to start. That's what the loop back to it was. If you press R and only R, so here you go, you're pressing R and only R, then you go to the state called red 1. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yes. And then this is everything else. Which, if you look at the table, oh, look at this. This is the transition to red, and this is the transition to stay in the start state. So now, any good state diagram will have a transition based on the inputs that will take you off to all the other states. So let's take a look back at our state diagram. And this, these notes will be online, so you can look at these uh, uh, after I have put them up there. We'll take a look. Here we had the A, R, B prime, G prime. You notice it only had one transition, only when you press R. There it is. It goes to the red state. A is when you're not pressing any button. And then this was the one that was what we call the catch-all, right? It pulled everything else if you were, um, if you we're pressing anything other than just red. So that's the advantage. This should have a transition based on the three inputs and there it is. The transition from one state to the next is going to be based on the previous state, in this case it was start, and then the input, and that is, a, that is a sequential logic circuit, correct? So, and then at all the other states, you're going to have, well, here's an example. Um, if we were to do the truth table, should we do the truth table for this one too? I tell you what, I want you to do the following truth table. I want you to do the truth table for the transition between green and red 2. So we're going to pause again and I want you to spend time to do this transition. All right? Show me the uh, show me the uh, um, show me the truth table for this. We'll come back. All right, we're back and I heard it almost immediately from somebody else. Oh, wait. A, A prime, A prime. A, R, B prime, G prime, A, R, B prime, G prime. Hmm. A, R, B prime, G prime, prime, prime. It's, it's the same. And actually, um, the thing to note is that the truth table is going to be the same but the transition, you are in state green, show the transition out of state. Well, you know, with, uh, with A prime, it's just going to um, transition back to the state green. This will transition to the wait state, and this will transition to red one. So going back to here, oh wow, same thing. So we can kind of reuse this, uh, we reuse this uh, digital logic. And so how would we uh, make this design? Well, we would have, in this case, we would have 
one, two, three, four, five, six different states, and we would have to have the logic, the combinational logic, to work with the digital logic. This would be actually rather complex. I just want you to understand how to capture a finite state machine. So let's look at uh, a little bit more example, or another example. So, this is a, uh, a standard uh, uh, laser timer finite state machine. Remember that? Remember our finite state machine that we did earlier with the laser timer? There is definitely something drastically wrong with this uh, with this specific slide. Remember, this was our finite state machine for that uh, um, for that laser timer. Where'd it go? There it is. That laser. Uh, that laser. Push a button. Do the laser for for three in a row. So now let's look back to uh, how we would implement it in circuitry. Again, remember, as I've mentioned, when we have our, our system, we will have our sequential logic part down here, what we call our state registers, in, in other words, our storage of where we are. We will provide inputs to this that says what state you should be in and then the uh, the outputs from that will feed to the combinational logic to say what state you should go into. Alright, so obviously uh, we can we could actually give a, a number or a value for the states. So let's say we want to be we want to call off is our state 0, 0, on is going to be 0, 1, on 2 is going to be 1, 0, and on 3 is going to be 1, 1. And again, this all works with the clock, and this is our uh, finite state machine input, which in this case is only the single button. By the way, note that we've seen this before, right? We've seen a slash identify that there are certain, this is a bus and there's a certain number of bits that go into our combinational logic. But I want you to look at this, is that you have inputs, you have outputs. The inputs and outputs are generated from the combinational logic. The combinational logic is fed by the, the inputs, buttons and other things like that from the outside world as well as what the previous state was. So the current state is going to be identified by the previous state and combinational logic. This is the general form. So this is an extremely important slide to understand. You never know when something like this will show up on a test or we'll ask you to follow the steps for, a, uh, um, for the design of a uh, uh, sequential circuit. Oh, you guys are taking pictures. It's in the notes. <laughs> so, you're going to capture the finite state machine. In other words, you're going to create a finite state machine that describes the desired behavior of what you want to do. Hey, there's an example of a finite state machine. It's implied that the transition between states happens on the rising edge of a clock. So you use the state register, the state register, and you could have m bits there, of the appropriate width and the combinational logic. The logic inputs are the state register bits and the finite state machine outputs are the next state bits. Basically that's describing this. That you're using these bits coming out which identify what the state is. Notice here we have four states, right? 
And how many lines do we have coming out? <coughs> Two, meaning what? Four, four combinations, right? One, two, three, four. Basically, whatever state number it is, is represented by these two bits right here. Four states, two bits. If we had uh, eight states, how many bits would we need? Three, all right. Assign unique binary numbers to each state. Use the fewest number of bits. Translate the finite state machine to truth table for combinational logic, such that the logic will generate the outputs and the next state signals. Ordering the inputs and the state bits first makes the corresponding. We'll show you examples. Implement the combinational logic using any method. What did we show an example of earlier? K-maps, right? Using K-maps to minimize the combinational logic. Just for grins, page 40, all right, of the notes. This is in the book. You know, the book, the thing you were supposed to, I, I said, you know, the book. And it's amazing. I had like, like 20 people in here say, oh, yeah, <laughs> as if you didn't know what the book was. All right. Step one, capture the finite state machine. Already did, or did. We did it, it, it all right. The next is set up the uh, architecture. We have um, two-bit state machines for four states, and we're going to now encode the states. So let's call that one 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Easy enough. We kind of already done that, right? Step 2C, fill in the truth table. So in this case, what did we have? Well, we had our inputs, S1 and S0, kind of helping us to what's the inputs will be the previous state, S1, S0, and the next state that we're going to expect. Along with B is the input and X will be the output. So here we have the uh, situations X will be 1, X will be 1, X will be 1. B, we only worry about when we're starting out at state 0, 0. So you notice here that even though we're pressing 1 here and here and here, it really doesn't affect anything else. So let's take a look. Here we have, we start out with state 0, 0. We're right up here, right? What will cause us to transition to the state zero, 01. When you're in zero, 00 and you press the button. So now you will output nothing yet, but you will go to state zero, 00 or zero, 01. Now you're in state zero, 01. Notice it doesn't matter what you do with the button. You could press the button or not press the button. If you're in state zero, 01, you will always transition to, oh, look at that. We, oh, no, there it is. It's right. You will transition to state 1, 0 and output a 1. You're in state 1, 0 now. Doesn't matter what you press the button, you will transition to state 1, 1 and you will output. And you're in state 1, 1. Your next state is going to be state 0, 0. That's this line up here and you will output a 1. Doesn't matter if you press the button or not, you're transitioning there. Once you're over here, oh, you're in state 0, 0. There you are, you're in state 0, 0. And depending on what you press for the button will be where the next state is. That was pretty easy, right? So how are we going to implement this logic here? Well, Oh yeah, so this is pointing out all the all the uh, information information that is associated, with it, which I just talked about, etc., etc., etc. All right, implement implement the combinational logic. So obviously you're going to have x 
N1 and N0 as outputs. So note that uh, um, X equal 1 if S is equal to 1 or S is equal to 0. So that pretty much says that that's a single, uh, single, um, what do you call that, a, a single gate, right? N1, well, that's interesting. It's going to be, by the way, you can do this with a K-map, right? In fact, here, I'm going to go up here. Draw the K-maps for, uh, for these three outputs. X1, N1, and N0 should be three K-maps which will give us three equations. Do those. All right. So uh, I showed you, uh, let's show you what I did. See how close they were. I did K-maps and I came up with these equations, which means that I'm going to be doing three separate combinational circuits associated with these. I might be able to share, for example, um, you notice that this is a uh, AND gate that is the same as this AND gate, so I kind of can share that, right? So if I were to go back to my uh, combinational circuit, and oh, lo and behold, it's the same thing that I did with a K map, uh, and then the uh, combinational circuit would look like this. And you know, two of these, like uh, this one right here and this one right here is copied, but oh well, that makes it easier to look at. All right, thank you very much.